Hi, I'm Dr. Jay from Modern Statistics. In this video using SPSS, I'll demonstrate how and why to calculate and create a composite scale by combining multiple items. The actual calculation is extremely easy and takes just 15 seconds or less to do it. But when you do this, or more precisely before you do it, you must ask yourself two questions. First, ask yourself why you're doing it. And second, ask yourself whether you choose whether you chose the right items. And because understanding the answers to these two questions is extremely important, this video will be a little longer than 15 seconds. Here I am with a data set that contains information on six items. Each of these can also be called a variable if that's how you intend to use it. But for now, We'll stick with the term item when referring to each column, and you'll know why in just a few minutes. For our example, our goal here is to create a composite measurement scale for job satisfaction. And each item describes or measures some aspect of job satisfaction. To see exactly what each item describes, let's go to variable view by clicking here. The first item or question in the survey data is, how satisfied are you with your involvement in decisions that affect your work? The second item or the question in the survey data is, how satisfied are you with the information you receive from management? And the third item is, how satisfied are you with the recognition you receive for doing a good job? So these six items are asking survey participants how satisfied or dissatisfied they are with these various aspects of their job. And for each question, the survey participants were to choose their responses from a five-point Likert scale that ranges from one being very dissatisfied to five being very satisfied. So right about now is the perfect time for me to ask you the first question. That is, why do I need all of these items to measure job satisfaction? Can I just use a single item and save my precious time from all that trouble? Well, my simple answer would be, you don't really have to. And yes, you can, and nobody can stop you. But do you think using just a single item here brings justice to representing what job satisfaction is? Take a look, for example, on the first item. People are likely to be happy with their job if they have high degree of autonomy on how they do their work. But is that the only aspect of the job that makes people happy with their job? What about the third item? Is being recognized for doing a good job an important part of being happy with the job? You bet. What about the fifth item? Would you be happy with your job if your company provides training to make you even better? Absolutely. So if you choose, for example, only one item from six items here, then that's how much weaker your measurement will be compared to when you use all six of them. In other words, your measurement based on a single item will contain more errors compared to the measurement based on multiple items. So you want to combine them and use their average score if you want your measurement to be strong and be respected by your audience. You can also think of it this way. Whenever we're measuring something by considering multiple items, chances are the reason for doing it is because you know that the variable you are trying to measure cannot be measured by a single item. So you are essentially measuring a construct, which is a term that we use when measuring something that is not directly observable. So we use relevant indicators as a proxy for that construct that we are measuring. For example, if you want to measure people's height, that's directly observable, isn't it? We can measure it directly with a tape measure or ask them how tall they are because they all know their height. And there's usually no need to look for other indicators to measure people's height like we are doing here. But say there are five of you listening or watching this video and I ask how each of you would define happiness. Then all of you will probably come up with different concepts or indicators to define happiness depending on what you emphasize the most. Some of you may focus on having lots of money as a measure of one's happiness, or some others may consider more intrinsic aspect of life in defining what happiness is. It's the same way with our example here, because job satisfaction is such a multi-dimensional construct, by the way, sorry for using the fancy language there, 
we must use a set of indicators that tap into those aspects of job inspection. Okay, now I think we're ready to answer the second question, which was, did I, did I choose the right items, or some call it indicators, for measuring job inspection? Well, how do we know if these indicators are the reasonable ones? Surely there may be other indicators that also tap into measuring some aspect of job satisfaction, but can we use the ones we have here? The answer can be found quite easily. To understand and decide whether these six items are measuring the same underlying construct, what we need to examine is the Cronbach's alpha score, which is a measure of internal consistency, or some call it a coefficient of reliability. Well, what in the world does that mean? It means that it looks at how closely related a set of items are as a group. So basically on average, how strongly are these six items together correlated? So you run correlations among every pair of the items here and calculate for the average of all the correlations, which is the Cronbach's alpha score. Don't worry, you won't have to do any of those hard calculations yourself. SPSS automatically calculates that for you. The Cronbach's alpha score ranges from zero to one. And if you're using it in your research and try to publish your research findings, the preferred minimum threshold is 0.7. You may still be able to publish your research if you're, if you're using a Cronbach's alpha score um, that is say between 0.6 and 0.7, but you will have to defend the lowest score against some criticism. So how do we test that in SPSS? Go to analyze and choose scale and choose reliability analysis. Now we select the six items and move them over like so and click on the statistics button. Make sure that the three boxes under descriptives four are checked. Click continue and click okay to run the procedure. When you do that, SPSS output will display five tables. We'll look at the two most important tables. In the previous slide, I mentioned that you want to achieve at least 0.7 or higher on your Cronbach's alpha value. And in our example here, the extent to which these six items hang together is clearly above the minimum threshold of 0.7. Now, let's look at the item total statistics table. And let's look at the third column. The correlation coefficient for each item in this column shows how strongly each item is correlated with the rest of the group. So as you can see, item number two and item number five are not as strongly correlated with the group as the others do. If you have a stats textbook with you, chances are it may say a minimum of three items are either recommended or required. And in this example, we have six items and the two items seem to be a potential troublemaker, um, but we can afford to lose them since we still retain four items, which is more than the recommended number of items in the literature. Now, why would I care about removing these two? Well, to answer the question, let's look at the last column. This column shows what our Cronbach's alpha score will look like if we removed each item. So for example, if we remove item number two, then our new Cronbach's alpha score will increase to 0 0.905. And if we remove item number five, our new Cronbach's alpha will increase, although slightly, to 0.893. So if you want to refine and make your measurement of job inspection a little better, a little cleaner, a little stronger, then removing these two potential troublemakers may be a good idea. However, whether to remove these two items or not is ultimately your decision as the researcher, depending on how critical retaining these two items may be in your own study. And for now, let's suppose I wanna keep all six items because all six items are important to me and um, it doesn't seem to harm uh, to my study by containing all six items. Then we finally compute the composite scale, which I told you takes 15 seconds or less to do it. I'll prove it to you. Go to transform, select compute variable. And for the new composite scale, we'll just name it composite. 
and the numeric expression will just calculate an average of the six items combined. So open parentheses and add the six items like so, and divide it by six and click OK. Then you now have the composite scale for job satisfaction. By the way, you can also use a mean function in SPSS to compute average if that's your preference. So in the computer variable window, a computer compute variable window, name it composite two, since we already created a new variable named composite and use the mean function like so, where you type mean, open parentheses, and at least the six items separated by comma, then the result is the same. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time.